What is up, App Nation? It is part three of this YouTube live series where we're talking all about ASO for beginning our apps. Now, in this part, apps that are ready to scale. And then on our last part, apps, million dollar apps that are already hit to scale. How do you incorporate ASO in that? And in this part, if you're just on the precipice, that's the right word, of ready to scale, how do you really optimize your keywords? How do you incorporate ASO into your UA strategy? We're going to cover it all with my friend, David Margrion, who is the head of ASO at Check ASO. Check them out. If you're really trying to do some competitor analysis or you're looking for an ASO tool, this is the one that I recommend. CheckASO.io. David, welcome back. Hi, Steve. Hi, everyone. All right, David, let's start with this. How do you really structure ASO? So in part ones and two, we talked about how do you really prioritize keywords? What do you, how do you use ASO to jumpstart your app? And on this one, you're ready to scale. You're getting thousands, maybe hundreds, if not thousands of downloads a day. So how do you really structure your ASO when you're now ready to scale? Yeah, well, I think um, everyone knows that optimization means continual improvement uh, and scaling. And especially for starters, it may be worth defining two different approaches to scaling. So let's divide them. Uh, the first uh, one is uh, scaling within the same locale, within the same country. And implies it implies the growth of metrics in, in a single country, which is due to uh, increased organic traffic when you have already done with your primary optimization in several iterations and made some progress in your ranking, in your downloads, and etc. Uh, and at this stage, uh, you should already have a steady flow of organic installs for, uh, and the quantity is not so important here because it it can vary depending on the category, on the niche, country, etc. In different niche, different countries, you will get different numbers. Uh, it's necessary to focus first, first of all, uh, on keywords and text elements uh, that is uh, gradually expand the semantic core and, and uh, more popular keywords to your metadata. Um, this requires a lot of uh, iteration and uh, lasting metrics monitoring. You need to embrace the fact that not all iterations will be su successful, of course. Um, comparative analysis is very important on this stage, of course, and uh, study the strategies of your competitors, track their performance. Uh, that's how you can get more data and make the right decision decisions uh, when scaling. This should, uh, should also be stimulated by the growth of traffic from external, external sources and to sum it up, uh, we can say that um, a deeper dive into data and deeper dive into testing different sets, uh, creative sets, metadata is a must, of course, at this stage. And um, as for the second approach, um, uh, it's uh, about scaling in, in other countries. So this approach fits any stage of development of developing uh, an app uh, or a game and nevertheless uh, it's better to apply it once uh, once you have have got stable metrics in at least uh, in one country and this applies not only to installs and ranking but also uh, to app stability uh, of your user retention lifetime value revenue etc and the approach uh, uh, to optimization in in different countries is uh, is pretty similar and doesn't differ uh, significantly. Uh, but um, scaling in new countries still has a number of challenges, of course. And the first step is uh, to research the market for relevant traffic. If uh, it is not there, if there is no traffic, then any effort uh, will be meaningless for you. For example an app that teaches snowboarding tricks uh, would be completely irrelevant in Saudi Arabia or maybe in Turkey, in, in countries where people <clears throat> don't 
ride snowboards and don't do snowboarding. There are much uh, many many such examples. So first of all, it's uh, market research for relevant traffic. Um, to localize uh, your app, you can also hire a native speaker uh, to do the text optimization, or you can do some research. Uh, <clears throat> a native speaker can help you to look for translation errors, bad wording, irrelevant screenshot text, inoperate, inoperate pictures, unpleasant colors, and etc. offensive text. Um, uh, choosing um, a native speaker is, uh, I think, the major challenge. There are many options, but the outcome may not be exemplary since the person can lack uh, experience in ASO uh, and understanding of how mobile industry and marketing works, or maybe, or maybe he or she simply don't know uh, what your app is about. <laughs> so uh, that's why you may want to. You, you may want to provide them with up-to-date details, first of all, and explain what is ASO, show maybe some, uh, some case studies or examples, uh, tell what your app is about, what you want to achieve, and what you have already done, uh, what brand or legal restrictions they are, if any, if you have any. Uh, the native speakers um, help, I think, is necessary if at this stage of forming text elements. First of all, when you are working with your text metadata, uh, this is uh, equally important uh, to get indexed by necessary keywords and also to keep your conversion rate high. And many apps has text metadata that's not quite legible. Uh, such apps uh, do not inspire confidence among users and lose a lot of installs due to low conversion, uh, which subsequently um, affects their ranking. And I often uh, find such apps, for example, in Russian App Store, when mm -hmm. apps from different countries come and try to uh, localize their apps, titles, and subtitles, and it looks quite weird. So that's why you should, um, you should find the native speaker, hire him, and use his, um, and, and ask him to help you. And another way to localize the app is uh, is a research. You can start by analyzing your app's uh, user statistics, how they behave uh, in different countries. If you have already like localized in uh, for some countries, maybe what uh, what content they like more, what elements users uh, interact with more often. Also analyze uh, popular topics in reviews, what users like uh, and what they consider unimportant maybe. You also can analyze your, um, your competitors' apps to maybe for cool screenshot ideas or differences in localization. Uh, you can explore culture-related features uh, through ads, uh, books, YouTube videos, cases, and UA creative sets maybe and other things you can use everything that will that can help you to to make your localization more uh, more professional uh, in general you can use both methods conduct research and then involve a native speaker but um, at the same time uh, localizing the apps interface is uh, is not must at this stage because it's much more important to access the market to find out how well you perform and look for your chances to succeed, first of all. Yeah. And if everything goes according to your plan, so um, you can see the progress, then your app should be localized after that only. And this will, uh, this will help you to significantly increase the user intersection, interaction and uh, of course, there is an uh, expectation, but scaling um, scaling to new market is simply not possible without uh, localization for some apps. For example, um, I don't know if you have uh, maybe stories about fairy tales app uh, about fairy tales for kids. You should translate your uh, user interface, and without 
without that you can do localization of your metadata because it won't bring you any any relevant related traffic and you will receive a lot of bad reviews and uh, mm -hmm. bad ratings yeah a couple of things i can share with you too david is one of the strategies a friend of mine shared way back in the day is he would go to <laughs> You know, you can go to Upwork or there was an Amazon M Turk, Mechanical Turk, and he would find people in different countries and be like, hey, here's what my app does, like your fairy tales model. What keywords in your native language would you be searching for in for this particular app? And then that's how he did his keyword research. And I think what we've worked when we're working with bigger companies, what we've typically done is I'll do the keyword research and find out all the data and the traffic and all that stuff. And I'll be like, Hey, here's my recommended title, subtitle and keyword field or long description. But can you guys just make sure you have a native person to look it over and make sure it looks good. So I do the bulk of the work and then they just finish it up just to make sure it looks nice and tidy too. Yeah, it's a great approach. So, Sometimes it's better to hire some native speakers, not yes, only sir. one, because <laughs> one of them can be not so good in this language. Yes. Don't know. So, yes, other people have done that strategy too, where they'll hire a few on there. Yeah. All right, let's move on to this. When you've now done all that stuff, I love the expansion stuff when you're ready to scale and you've optimized all the keywords. What should we be focusing on next besides? Because ASO, you know, we think about keywords a lot. By the time it incorporates a lot of stuff like screenshots, app icon, you know, maybe optimizing the short description. Mm -hmm. So what should we be doing next after we've optimized the keywords? Um, so um, once you you've got you've gone beyond the initial stages and you are quite uh, efficient when it comes to text metadata and you can proceed to the uh, stage of working with additional aspects which will affect your metrics too. And the first and most obvious thing is working with conversion rate, of course. And the more, because uh, the more organic traffic you get, the higher the role of this metric. And conversion is not only about uh, graphic assets, not only about screenshot icon, uh, as many believe, but also about additional factors, uh, the most important of which uh, in these steps, I think it's... Uh, apps average trading uh, because this metric can have a serious impact on conversion uh, as about two thirds of users pay attention to it before they install an app. And for example, a free, free star app can lose up to half of potential install installs while uh, one or two star app can lose up to 90% of potential installs. So it's very important to look for your average rating. Uh, uh, in order to start improving your rankings, you need to, to understand the root of the problem. Uh, for example, your competitors might, might leave negative reviews on your app page on purpose. In this case, you should stick uh, to a professional approach, of course, and respond to such reviews correctly. Uh, for more uh, efficient result, you should uh, involve store moderators to deal with such reviews, report the reviews, describe the problem and explain why they are fake. And for more of, uh, for many people, it may seem that uh, such a scenario is quite rare, but it's very common in tier two, tier three countries where blackhead ASO methods are actively used, for example, in uh, Brazil, Russia, India, a lot of this stuff you can find when your competitors can leave negative reviews, can buy negative reviews on your mm -hmm. app. Mm -hmm. So it's very, very usually. And But if your low rating uh, is due to the app quality of your app quality in broad sense, uh, then it might be necessary to improve your product, first of all, because um, as a rule, there is a this is the most common issue uh, that cannot be solved in a single day. And in this case, you may want to work uh, with uh, reviews and communicate with your users. Try to communicate um, to communicate your position and resolve as many issues, uh, as many problems of your users as possible. And of course, feel free to ask users to change their rating if you manage to resolve their issue because some of them can do that. And um, 
Another important way to handle reviews, I think, um, is to uh, implement a review request with prompt. Uh, users uh, are much more willing to share negative experience, of course, right. and very rarely positive ones. A large number of happy users neither leave reviews or on all rate apps, and you should ask them to do that. Uh, and review request allows you to do this uh, right from inside the app. For example, right after user complete a game level or make a in-app purchase, uh, some bad reviews may be related uh, to wrong timing, of course, because if you ask to rate your app at the most interesting moment of the game, maybe it will it will uh, most likely result in a bad review. And if you ask uh, for it in a right after uh, an important in-game achievement, for example, when user finished uh, the hard level, the event will be much more appropriate. And for, um, for, for apps with uh, in-app functionality asking to rate the app right after the user has, uh, um, has successfully ordered something, maybe the best option, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, another trigger may be a certain number of times uh, the user opened the app. Uh, say they open your app at least uh, 10 times in three days. This means that you will limit your audience, but those who who remain will most like most likely leave a positive uh, rating or positive review. Uh, the bottom uh, line is to ask for a rating once the user completes the target action or is uh, in waiting mode. Uh, and there are various uh, trigger options depending on the kind of app you have. Uh, review request is a feature, of course, available for for, to everyone, uh, and it's easy to introduce and configure. Uh, with it, you can you can increase a number of reviews and your average rating, of course. Um, it make, uh, makes no sense to buy paid reviews that I said later and uh, earlier, sorry, <laughs> uh, as this approach will, will have a very short-term effect and many developers buy uh, reviews and ratings, especially in tier two, tier three countries. But store algorithms uh, are very good at recognizing such reviews and ratings and removing them um, after a day or two. And in, so in some cases, they can, they can even reject the app. And this approach is uh, clearly not justified, I think. Um, well, in addition to the to the uh, average rating, conversion can be influenced influenced by reviews, of course, uh, especially those uh, featured uh, in the app page. I think everybody everybody see the some reviews that are featured on every apps page, and these are several reviews that visible to all users before uh, the full list of reviews expands. And uh, the major uh, criteria that affects how reviews get in this list are the number of characters, first of all, uh, the number of user ratings and the reviewed version of the app. For example, if the most, uh, if you have uh, reviews, two reviews, and one of the review is for the, the last version of the app, this review will be in the top. So, um, many users love to read reviews, of course, and it's important to have enough of them on the on the app page. And the more reviews you have, uh, the more loyal uh, users will be for your app since they will see that uh, your app, your product is in demand and many people use use it and it's it's popular. Yeah, I like it. Dave, one of the things I also want to <clears throat> recommend to you could do clients too especially you know this is pro important part one where we, we discussed this but having some way of the user in like interacting with you so online chat you see this on every website you can always chat with somebody but that's a way to mitigate some of the lower negative reviews that you might be getting too and it's also a great way to get feedback on where your customers are like hey i don't know how to do x y and z so 
chat to chat with me. And I have a chat feature on my website and I get some great insights from people like, Hey, can you do this? Can you do that? And people just want that immediacy of being able to talk to somebody. Now, David, I'm going to yeah. put you on the spot here. If you had to rank an order of importance of things that you should really be focusing on or testing reviews, icons, screenshots, do you have an order that you would say, Hey, here's how I would recommend you optimizing mm, well first of all after text optimization of your yes. metadata i think uh first place is reviews <laughs> and your ever trading because if it's low you will lose all your installs uh the second thing is um graphic assets screenshots i think because uh it affects your conversion rate and screenshots, reviews, and maybe the third thing is, uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe, maybe. Well, we have the icon still, do you want to test yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I mean, the screenshot icons, every uh, everything which is related to graphic assets is the second place. The third place is uh, testing maybe uh, different approaches of, uh, custom store listing or maybe in-app purchases promoted in apps in app store and other other things yeah that's a great one the promoted in-app purchases we talked about that in our youtube live stream so you guys can have to check that out but it is one of the great ways of trying to like really dominate your search listings i don't know exactly how to get it indexed yet david unless you have some ideas on how to do that but like definitely do all the things put an image in there optimize your in-app purchase for the keywords that you want to really go after too anything you want to add on that david no it's quite simple you just need to use uh, good keywords uh, you can use the keywords that are in your apps metadata and that's why you your in-app can rank uh, um, with your app page and I think that's enough. Uh, make a description, some keywords, uh, icon, and that's that will be enough. All right, David, let's end with this. How do we incorporate ASO into our UA strategy? Well, um, many people consider that ASO and UA um, is completely different. Maybe at first uh, sight, uh, this is true, of course, but um, if you dig a little deeper, you can see that uh, this is not entirely true. Uh, in simple terms, both of these uh, areas uh, pursue the goal of attracting users and at the lowest cost and with the highest conversion. Uh, first, um, uh, user acquisition has a, has a direct impact on organic traffic and more uh, the more traffic you buy, the higher your ranking by keywords. The better you rank in collections of similar apps or related apps in stores itself. And uh, this correlation has been proved uh, to be true by uh, thousands of tests with the various apps, uh, by different ASO managers and by, by myself, of course. Uh, secondly, the quality of traffic from external traffic sources is very important. Uh, in, if the traffic is irrelevant with pure uh, engagement rate, uh, you can, uh, this can affect the app ranking negatively, first of all. Uh, interaction of uh, ASO and user acquisition is uh, primarily about conversion and creative, first of all. Uh, you should consider the fact that all ad traffic is directed to the app page. And this means that uh, um, developing visuals for ads and uh, screenshots and icons uh, on the app page should be joined and uh, take into account the features of each. And you, you need to build a funnel that will help you achieve uh, the highest conversion, not only for ad traffic, but also for organic traffic from, from the store. Um, misleading uh, ad traffic has gotten quite popular recently. And as 
as present gameplay elements that are not found in the game. This is a common and it's uh, it's very popular among gaming apps, first of all. And if, uh, if you use such a strategy, you may want to find a balance between uh, uh, to retain the optimum conversion, first of all. And to maximize the effect of this strategy, you should, for example, um, introduce mini levels, uh, mini gaming levels that you use in your ad campaigns with the gameplay shown. Uh, and this way you will get, you will not only get high conversion rate uh, from your ad campaigns, but also keep good user retention rates in your app. Uh, and this of course affects your ranking by keywords. And you can improve the efficiency of uh, ASO and UA inter interaction by implementing custom store listings, for example. Um, this tool is available uh, only for uh, games and plays in Google Play, and it allows to um, up to five pages with different metadata within the same country. And with it, uh, you will be able to divide users depending on their language and set up different ad campaigns uh, when users are re redirected to your app page from an ad, they will, they will see the page optimized for their language and preferences. And I think it will be, it will be a good uh, approach to test. Yeah. Uh, for the App Store, if, you've, if you have heard uh, recently, App Store decided not to stand aside and announced the Apple custom page. Um, and this functionality will be available in near future, I believe this year, but maybe in 2022. Mm -hmm. And it will allow you to customize app pages with different metadata and generate um, unique links, links for, for each of them. And you can, you can uh, use these links in your ad campaigns. And I think this could uh, significantly increase conversion from ad traffic, first of all. Yeah, love it. The Love it. The The ways that we've used the UA is when we're running Apple search ads, if we find a keyword that's really converting high from a tap to download perspective, then we incorporate that in our ASO. So for a client of ours, we're like, oh, I didn't know this keyword was sort of in our keyword field. Now let's put in their subtitle because it's converting really high from Apple search ads. And then another thing, David, that we did too, was for another client who's doesn't have their most relevant terms, does not have any traffic whatsoever. So it's like, uh, what do we go after? Right? What keywords? And so we started thinking through like what other keywords we can go after. And so first thing we did was, put these keywords into Apple search ads. So we had different categories, right? And then we're like, we ran it exact match. Now they're all like, you know, branded type of keywords. And we didn't see that much because Apple search ads just sometimes takes time. So we didn't see any impressions. So we moved that into Facebook and then we said, all right, let's set up these audiences who are interested in this, these different, different five categories and let's see which one converts the best. And that informed our ASO strategies too. So there's a lot of ways. And like you said yeah. it best, David, you know, it's all a part of the entire marketing mix. They all help each other out. So there's a lot of learnings that you can use from your ad campaigns into your search ads too. Yeah, I agree. Especially cool. with um, Apple search ads, it's a great way yeah, not only to to attract, to get installs, but also to find different keywords, new approaches for your semantic core. And yeah. that's great, yeah. One last tip that actually, a, during a YouTube live stream, we the guest said was he used Google Ads to run tests. You know, on Google Ads, they just test the headline, all that stuff, and then the winning headline he used in his screenshots. So it's another yeah, test. yeah. All right, that's also great. We 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 use this approach, yeah, sometimes that, but it it not only work uh, work good because uh, sometimes it it can increase your conversion rate uh, from the organic traffic, but sometimes um, at at traffic and organic traffic is different. Users are different. And sometimes, unfortunately, it doesn't work for, for me, first of all, for, for our apps.
That's good to know. And in part four, we're going to talk all about all you big guys out there. How do you incorporate ASO? What you should be focusing on. So make sure you check out that part. And lastly, go check out, <laughs> or <laughs> I always say check out, but go check out, check ASO. All you got to do is go to checkaso.io. It is linked up to the YouTube description as well. Phenomenal ASO tool that's going to help you from whenever you're starting out to when you're ready to scale. And the last part we'll cover for you million dollar apps out there. I'll see you on the next video.